Good afternoon. I am Lillian Merja. Today is the first Sunday of Lent. At this time, if you have a cell phone, please silence it or turn it off. If during the liturgy, children need to use the restroom, we ask that they be accompanied by an adult. We extend a warm welcome to those of you who are visitors. The celebrant for this Mass will be Father Kelly. In this gathering, we have been asked to remember Tyler Lawson, Ken and Jean Manel, Jesslyn Boucher, and Jeffrey Ronquist. Only one collection is taken up during Mass. Please place both your offertory donation and your donation for capital improvement in this single collection. Please use second collection envelopes found at the entrances for any check or cash donation made to the second collection. Let us now take these final moments to prepare ourselves to receive Jesus in the Eucharist and pray together our parish mission prayer. Through your Son, Almighty Father, we have received the mission to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them. Help each and every one of us at St. Patrick's Parish to go, make, baptize, and teach so that each person that we meet will fall in love with you and seek your love in the sacraments. Through Christ our Lord, amen. afternoon. Let us now join into worship by praising God with our opening hymn, number 121, led by the Spirit, number 121. Please stand. Led by the Spirit of our God, we go to fast and pray. With into the wilderness we join his past away red lord your garments and your hearts turn back your lives in me the Savior kind and gracious god whose reign is liberty led by the spirit we confront temptation face to face and know full well that must rely on god's redeeming grace on bread alone we cannot live but nourished by the word we seek the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I pray that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, we gather this afternoon as God's family in this first weekend of Lent. Uh, today's Gospel speak about the temptations of Jesus, and I'll uh, say a little bit more about that shortly. And as we gather in God's presence right now, <clears throat> Why don't we just pause for a few moments, we can recall to mind our sins and seek the Lord's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You give us the consolation of the truth, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. And you went to see for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, 
through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, The priest shall receive the basket from you and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Aramean who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation, great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm, with terrifying power, with signs and wonders, and bringing us into the country, he gave us the land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the products of the soil, which you, O Lord, have given me. And having set them before the Lord your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. him on high. 
because he has acknowledged my name, he shall call upon me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does scripture say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we preach. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. For the scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, it is written, not one does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him up to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him in reply, it also says, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord.
My dear friends, first of all, as we gather here this afternoon, I would ask that you would continue to pray with all of the people throughout the world in this whole situation with the Ukraine, and especially for all of the people who have been forced to flee their homes. I think it's over a million people now. And for those people who have been killed, uh, going along with the words of Pope Francis and asking people to pray and to fast for peace, we need to do this more than ever. And let's pray that uh, it will not escalate. And as Pope Francis mentioned, we need to keep on praying more than ever. And so let's keep this thought in mind today to keep on praying more than ever. Uh, today, on this first weekend of Lent, the gospel passage always uh, deals with the temptations of Christ. Uh, the synoptic gospel of uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and uh, this year, in the third year of the liturgical cycle, our liturgical year C, we deal with Luke's version of the temptation narrative. And during this holy season, I know that many of us, we keep Lenten resolutions, but as it goes on, let's pray that we, if, even if we fail in these, revolution, in, in these resolutions, keep on persevering, keep on going on to the Lord. And the temptation, the narrative today, it speaks about the temptations of Jesus, his temptations. And I know some people ask the questions, uh, well, I was tempted to do this. I wanted to do this, but I didn't give in. Did I sin? And the answer is no, you did not sin. Temptations are not sins. There is a big difference. In fact, temptations can be a source of tremendous graces and spiritual growth when we overcome them. I've heard, and this is true, it's very easy to be good when you're not tempted. True statement. Very easy to be good when you're not tempted. And of course, uh, look at the lives of some of our great saints. You know, you see the life of someone like uh, St. Augustine. Temptations of the flesh, which bothered him for the rest of his life, even after his extraordinary conversion. St. Augustine. Or somebody like uh, Venerable Matt Talbot, the Irish penitent, the patron saint of alcoholics, oftentimes referred to at some AA meetings, Matt Talbot, his temptations for alcohol. Or somebody like uh, St. Therese, Therese of Leisure, St. Therese, at the end of her life when uh, she was so afflicted with tuberculosis, she was very seriously tempted to end it all. End it all, get rid of my sufferings, just end it now. Serious temptation, but she didn't do it. She let God take charge, she overcame them. And how do we deal with temptations when they come? And they come to all of us. First of all, we have to admit it. This temptation came. I was tempted to do this. I was tempted to do that. I wanted to do this. I wanted to do that. But they were overcome. Let's not underestimate them. They do come. We have to admit that they do come. Temptations do come. 
Secondly, I feel that we have to recognize the power of evil. Evil is all around us, as you know and as I know. I was talking with someone recently. Uh, This person is going through a serious crisis in his life, something that he never imagined would happen. And this person said to me, I never realized the power of evil in such a way until I came to this. Never realized it. And uh, power of evil is real. And let's never forget that the, great, that the devil's greatest means of deception is to get people to believe that he doesn't exist. Okay? I'll repeat this. The devil's greatest means of deception is to get people to believe that he doesn't exist. He's certainly doing a good job in this day and age because a lot of people think that he doesn't exist. Oh, this is an old medieval medieval tale. It isn't. He does exist. And let's never underestimate it. And it's interesting, Pope Francis in many of his homilies recognizes the power of evil and the reality of the devil. He doesn't believe it's anything of the past. He realizes that it's right here and right now. And there are many, many ways in, as regards to temptations in which people can give in. And one of these ways is that of compromising. Uh, compromise. This, that, or the other thing. And by compromising, uh, we can get into situations that are very difficult to get out of. Uh, For example, uh, the person with an alcohol problem should stay away from taverns. A person with a weakness puts alcohol and they go into a tavern, it could be too much to overcome. So therefore, stay away from them. Or the person with the addiction to gambling, stay away from casinos. You never know. Some of this can can be very, very difficult. In fact, it's one of probably the worst addiction that there is, this addiction to gambling. Uh, Many... There are many people today, um, it's not necessarily just young people, but it could affect people of all ages. And it's an addiction and a temptation to pornography. And it's so rampant. It could be very addictive extremely destructive and it could do a horrible amount of harm. Addictions to pornography and it's all around and especially on the computer. You know, it's easy to get into but it's very easy to get out of as well. All you have to do is pluck, delete, boom, gone and it's true delete. Stay away. People need to stay away from it. It's very, very deceitful. And in so many situations, it can start off so small, and people feel it can be so harmless. But boy, can it grow. And it can be so destructive. Uh, the whole thing about 
into uh, drugs and so on and so forth. It doesn't start with the hard stuff. It can start off very minor, very minuscule. And people can think to themselves, well, this is not going to do any harm. Well, it can grow into something very seriously harmful. And so many times it does. The final sentence in today's gospel, when it said the devil had had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. Departed. And the lesson in that sentence, temptations do not last forever. Temptations do pass. And we admit that we are tempted. We do the best we can to move on. And we are stronger for having gone through them, gone through them successfully. God bless you all. And these are certainly good thoughts to keep in mind at the beginning of this holy season. Do you all please stand as we pray our one profession of faith? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, incarnated of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. St. Paul tells us that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We call upon the name of the Lord in this assembly today as we call to mind our needs and the needs of our brothers and sisters around the world. For the church, that through fasting, prayer, and almsgiving, we may help to satisfy the physical and spiritual hunger of our neighbors around the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders and others in positions of authority, that they may work for peace for all people, especially those in the Ukraine, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people of faith who fight to preserve religious liberty, may the Lord strengthen their resolve to hold firm in their witness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all men and women being chosen by Christ to follow him as priests, deacons, sisters, and brothers, that they will preserve in the face of temptations against faithfulness to their call. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, as we face temptations, great and small, that we may turn to God for support and strength, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Megan West and Franklin Froughton, and all who have died recently, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Tyler Larson, Ken and Jean Manel, 
Jesslyn Beauchet, and Jeffrey Wanchrist, and for all our beloved deceased, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers of this assembly and for all the prayers written in our parish book of intercessions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I would, I would also ask that you remember to pray for a friend of mine all the way back to childhood. His name was Gregory Lewis, who passed on yesterday. And we pray for the repose of his soul as well. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Loving God, guide us as we wander through the desert of temptation, losing awareness of your constant care. Sustain us in our Lenten journey as we make this, these prayers to you. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray once again, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he concentrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by setting down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and had willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Peter our Bishop, and all of the clergy, religious laity everywhere. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
blessed apostles, St. Patrick, our patron, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so therefore we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. For Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for everlasting life. Amen.
body of Christ. 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 One bread, one body, body of Christ. one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we. And 
Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which comes through your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessings. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, eternal redemption be assured. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of quick announcements before we leave. Uh, first of all, confessions will be heard in the church this Wednesday evening, March 9th at 8 o'clock in the evening. This Friday evening, March 11th, we will have a healing mass at six in the evening. At this healing mass, Father Vaughn will offer the anointing of the sick to those who are in need of the sacrament. Stations of the cross take place 
on this coming Friday, March 11th at 7 o'clock in the evening. And come and see the Eucharistic Miracles display. They'll be on display on the following days and times. Uh, next Saturday, March 12th, from 12 to 2 in the afternoon and from, six to, from 5 to 6 in the evening. Sunday, March 13th, a week from tomorrow, 9 to 10 in the morning, 11.30 to 2 in the afternoon. And Monday, March 14th, a week from Monday, uh, from, from 8.30 to 9.30 in the morning, and from 4 to 7 in the evening. It should be a very interesting display, and uh, I would really encourage you to come to see this Eucharistic mir Miracles display at one of these times that I just mentioned. My friends, the Lord be with you. With May the blessings of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon all of you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Again, we turn to St. Michael, and through his intercession we can pray together. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. We go now in the peace of Christ to love and to serve the Lord. How are you doing? 